My brethren, I would like to greet the brethren who are watching with us here through Zoom and our brethren through YouTube, the brethren from the Church of Houston, the brethren from the Church of Marietta, peace of the Lord Jesus. And I invite the brethren to put the word of the Lord in the Old Testament, in the book of Joshua. Joshua 24, 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will praise your name because your presence is real. And there are no limits for the operation of your Holy Spirit in our lives. We thank you for the fellowship, for your message, for your word that has been read. We ask that this same word may speak to our hearts and that this operation may continue in a complete way in each life that is watching us and participating on the service tonight. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen, Lord. My brethren, the text that we just read here, as I mentioned, it's well known of the church, and it's, it speaks of a moment, a crucial moment in the life of the people of Israel. The people was already there, as we know, in the final moment, just about to enter into the promised land. They have, years have passed, the promise of God had been made, the miracles, we know the entire trajectory of the people from the departure from Egypt all the way to the moment, going through the Jordan River, through the desert, the destruction of the walls of Jericho, and we come here, and Joshua, at the end of his life, Joshua sees something that was taking place in the midst of the people. And the people was about to enter in the Promised Land, but God was no longer the focus on the life of the people. And Joshua brings this message. And my brethren, we, we have seen in the last few weeks, we have studied about the apostasy, about the way in which Christianity behaves many times, the Church of Laodicea, La Laodicea, and we see this moment. The people was going through a moment that was just before their entering, entrance into the Promised Land. And we are about to enter the Promised Land. And there is a song that says, Cana is right out, right there. And, but we live in days, my brethren, in which inside of Christianity, and we're not speaking about the world. The world have already made their choice. The world already belongs to evil. But we speak in, in Christianity that God and, and Jesus is no longer the center of all things in the world. And the word says that if it is evil for you to serve the Lord, and my brethren, saving, ser serving the Lord has never been a popular thing. It was not today and it was not in the past. We see here, Joshua asked this question because many are, were already thinking, is it, is it really good to serve the Lord? That's why they, he asks this. If it is good for you to serve the Lord, if you think that serving the Lord is not that good, then you make a choice. And we came, my brethren, and we went through our journey. Each one of us, me and my family, we as a church, we individually speaking, each one has gone through their own journey. Each one has their own experience. Getting out of Egypt, each one has gone through their desert. 
And tonight, Lord, brings us to this moment, a moment that for us, individually speaking, to make this decision because Jesus comes and the word says in a twinkling of an eye that the trumpet is going to sound my burden. It does not depend on me or anyone else. The trumpet will sound, but if it will, if it will sound for me or not, that's something else. The trumpet will be blown and the choice is ours. And the question that he asks, that Joshua asks to the people, he says the following, you're going to serve to the gods of your parents, are you going to serve to the God that operated, has done everything that he has done in the past, are you going to serve the God that named the people that gave the identity to the people or are you going to serve the God of this century the God of the Amorites or the, the pleasures and of this life my brethren the choice is ours and the Lord is also asking this question same question to us tonight are we going to serve the things of this world of being mixed with the things of this life where the wind of doctrine it enters in a subtle way but the object, objective is to destroy our homes like the Lord has shown tonight uh, in a spiritual gift about our, our family specifically or are we going to serve a God that gave us an identity because we met the Lord we were just another person we're just a number. But today, my brethren, we as a church, we have a father, we have a name, we have a last name, we have an identity, we know where we came from, and we know where we are going to. And this is all thanks to this God. And the question of the Lord for us tonight is, who are you going to serve? But the stand that the serve has to have with regards to the world, with regards to this question is, I don't know what is my neighbor going to choose. I don't know what that Christian there is going to choose or that church is going to choose. No. One thing I know, that my house and I, we're going to serve this God. My house and I, my household and I, we're going to serve the Lord. And the word of the Lord is very clear. My brethren, the choice belongs to us, but for each choice there is a result. We cannot, like we see out there, uh, warm Christianity, lukewarm Christianity, a Christian that goes from one side to the other, serve, serve one, then serve another. They want to serve God, but they want don't want to let go of the pleasures of the world. My brethren, we have an identity. Each one knows what God has done in their own lives. In the same way that God has shown in other spiritual gifts, the answer to a prayer. And it's funny that the brother was reading the gift, spiritual gifts and uh, the theme of the year brought, was brought to my mind. And we're going to speak about the spiritual gifts. The brethren are going to understand what it is to call the name of the Lord because every time the people of Israel called upon the name of the Lord, Go, the Lord answered their, their call. The promise of the Lord has never failed. When Joshua says this, it's not because the promise of, of God was not was running the risk of not being fulfilled. Not at all. The promise of the Lord will be fulfilled for the one who makes the right choice in the same way as Joshua made. My brethren, the promise of God of bringing, taking his church redeem his church, to bring him to heaven, and to live in heavenly dwellings, everything that we already know, the Lord is, he, he will fulfill those promises. The promises continue. However, to the ones who this promise will be fulfilled, it, it all depends on us. And tonight, our stand needs to be, and it will be in the name of Jesus, in the same way as Joshua's. Doesn't matter what happens, how many are going to fall on my side, on my left, and on my right side, 
me and my household, we are going to serve the Lord. My household and I, we're going to remain in the presence of the Lord because this is the God that took me out of Egypt. This is the God that when I went through the heat of this world, He placed a cloud upon, on my above me. And when I was feeling cold at night, He put a column of fire ne near me. He's the one who provided the manna and removed water from the rock. That's the God that we serve, my brethren. That's the word of the Lord for us tonight. If it is evil for you, if it's not good enough for you, if for many out there, out, out there, it's not good enough, it's not very good to serve the Lord, because so uh, there are so many other things where God is no longer the center, but for the faithful church, we have already chosen, and we made the good choice. The word in Deuteronomy says, choose therefore life, so that you may live in abundance. My brethren, we choose life. We choose to serve the Lord because He is the one who took us out of the desert. When today we have an identity because of this. May God bless us in His Word and that tonight will be a night of definition for us and for our households. We're going to have a word of glorification before we sing another song. Any bride, one of and one of the brethren can glorify the Lord. Lord, we glorify your name for your word. They spoke to our hearts. Lord, we praise you because you serve a living God, a God that has operated in the past and that operates in our midst, a God that sustains his people standing. And Lord, we praise you because we know that you are the God that goes ahead of us uh, is victorious on our behalf and give us, us the sustenance and restores our health. You are the one, Lord, that takes care of uh, our loved ones. We praise you, Lord, and adore you because it is good to serve you, Lord. Blessed be your name because one day the sadness, the anguish, the infirmities, all of this is going to pass and we will be with our God in eternity where there is going to be only a great joy. Lord God, the reward for your people. We praise you, Lord, for everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's glorify the Lord. O grande dia.
Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. My brethren, the Lord was showing. Let me just open here. The Lord was showing. The Lord gave three spiritual gifts as we were praying for the service. And uh, in the first vision, the Lord said, it speaks about what we have already mentioned here in the message that the house of a lady there was a, a small gap and there the wind would enter I'm reading the gift literally so that the brethren would, would understand and a very small wind would come and would carry with it a lot of dust it would bring dust into the house and the family of this lady together with her they didn't see that this the dust would come through that gap and it isn't sensing that this gap was was on the roof and my brethren the doctrine that is taught out there this Christianity that is taught out there as we have mentioned where the values are upside down where God and Jesus they are no longer the center when man does no longer needs the Holy Spirit why we can just do whatever we want. And this many times, it starts small. It doesn't seem to be something difficult. But the damage when it enters into the, the life of man is great. Because besides sin and the dust that enters, the wind comes and dishevels everything. Everything falls to the ground and break. And is in the same way in the life of man. When the sin enters, because of lack of a, a making a definition in the presence of the Lord, sometimes everything was already right on the life of, of a person. It's no longer correct. Whatever was in its proper place it falls out and breaks. That's how it is in the life of man. But tonight is a night where you need to make a definition. It's a night where we have to say, my brethren, our battle, my brethren, as a church, we hear many times people saying, the church begins at home. We are, I always heard that ever since I was younger. But this has never been as true as it is on our days. Isn't it true? Where we are prevented to go to the church. We don't see each other personally. We don't speak with one another. There's not a direct contact with the pastor and the, and the sheep, where the sheep goes and receives the prayer. That's not how it works today. So if you are not firm and prepared in our own homes, if our household is not, uh, we are not paying attention to those things, uh, husband, wife, father and daddy, if you are not um, father or mother, if you are not in a proper stand according to the Lord wants and the Lord is coming so now I ask this question also for me uh, this promise is for me and the Lord also was showing another vision of a, a, a sister who has received a very bad news regarding her family member and this has caused her to be very anguished and sad but the Lord says that one angel has been sent to operate on the life of this family member. So, as we have said there in Psalms 91, I'm going to read it to the brethren. The theme there, you call me and I'll answer him. I will be with him in anguish. The sister is anguished. The Lord has promised that He will be with you in the moment of anguish. And the Lord is with her. Let's be the Lord for this. And in the vision, I read also, the Lord was showing a man. This person had nothing in his house anymore. His uh, shelves were empty, no food. But he called upon the Lord and asked for mercy. Because he no longer has any resource. He no who to resort to, but he believed that God was going to turn this situation around, and the answer of the Lord is, tonight, 
doing the service. The Lord was sending an angel to go into his house. And it's interesting that the Lord sent this angel, my brethren, with a check that is a blank check. doesn't even have a value because the love of God cannot be compared, that cannot be measured. There is not a value. It's no. The fact that the Lord heard the prayer of this man because the Lord, the fact that the Lord can hear our prayers is, is priceless. And it says that the check was a blank check and he says this year it's going to be different. This year is going to be the year of plenty because the Lord has heard your your plea. My brethren, we, are, we serve this Lord, my brethren, the Lord of Israel. Why? Because the Lord of Israel was the God that operated miracles. My brother, my brethren, this God is not just about any God. He's a God of miracles, the God of Israel. I'm going to ask for yet another prayer to the Lord, a glorification, because that's the God whom we serve. It's the God that never let us leave us alone. It's a God that heard this man through his need and this woman in her anguish. And the Lord is the one who has seen this family with a, a gap in the roof. But the Lord wants to operate in their lives. We're going to have another glorification. I'm going to hand the word to Pastor Ronildo. Beloved Father, we glorify you. We glorify you because we serve a wonderful God, a loving God. A God has spoken to our hearts, that has guided our lives. Lord, we praise you because you sent your only begotten Son, so that today, Lord, we could give glory and hallelujahs to you, Lord. As the Word says, you are the one who have chosen us. You are the one who loved us first. We may have been lost in the world without any direction. But today we place our lives on this rock, which is the Lord Jesus. Lord, we praise you for this word tonight, for this device that you have provided for us, so that we could be together as a single body, Lord, to glorify you. Because the spiritual food has not, never been lacking in our lives. You have heard each one of our needs and blessed our lives. Beloved Father, we praise you and glorify, Lord, because soon we'll be together with you in eternity. Like the song said, we will be embracing Jesus. That's why we praise you, Lord, for this wonderful night, for this spiritual food, for this spiritual gift that speaks to our hearts. Beloved Father, we ask that you continue with us, helping us in this moment in which the world is cold, is already sunk in evil, Lord, so that we may be light in this world of darkness, Lord. Lord, we glorify for everything in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus. Amen, Jesus. My brethren, peace of the Lord. Here's this word. Those spiritual gifts that the Lord gave for the service tonight. Here's the teaching and even the direction from the part of the Lord for our lives. Our stand needs to be to always choose serving the Lord, never to give heed to disobedience and sin, never to lose our focus, our gaze to be always pointing to the Lord. Amen. Let's pray, bring the service to a close. And uh, afterward, after the prayer, whoever wants an assistance, we will be placing ourselves at the disposal of whoever wants to receive it. Amen. Lord God, once again, we want to glorify your name and ask, Lord, that your word may remain in our hearts and that it may generate life in life in abundance. Lord God, this life that will bring us to live with you in eternity. Give us a blessing of transformation in the thoughts, transformation, Lord, in the hearts, so that you may continue, Lord, with your hands laid upon each one of us, each home here represented. Receive our glorification. This is a prayer that we say 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in your name we say that wonderful grace of our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I come to the end of the service, reminding the brethren that tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning, we're going to have our Sunday school. So uh, I'd like to ask the brethren to be paying attention to YouTube, the transmission from Brazil. And yes, and tomorrow night at 7.30, we'll be here once again for another service of glorification of the Lord and to all the peace of the Lord. Let's, let's continue being praying for our brethren. I know that a few are still infirm, and others with cold. They don't know if it's cold or if COVID. So let's pray so that the Lord may have a blessing and continue blessing them and preserving them. The brethren of the Church of Pompano and the Church of Marietta, and also from Houston. Amen. And the remaining brethren, they have been following us. Our prayer is, Lord, lay your hands upon us, protect us for the glory of your name. Amen. Peace of the Lord. Pai do Senhor, Marcelo. Pai do Senhor, Pai do Senhor, irmão. Pai do Senhor, Gabi. Pai do Senhor, Gabi. Gabi. Pai do Senhor, Jesus, e a... boa noite a todos. Oi, não tá aqui não, amor. Pai do Senhor, meus irmãos. Até amanhã. Pai do Senhor, Gabi. Um beijo. A parte é, irmãos. A parte é, irmãos.